A thanks to Game Deck for sponsoring this episode. Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up. Now this is the second time I've recorded this video because unfortunately I'm an idiot and I forgot to plug my microphone in the first time and it sounded like I was recording it in the toilet. Make sure to save 10% on any of your Nintendo eShop purchases using code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg to buy your eShop vouchers. What regions haven't we covered yet? Are there still people that try and use the store and it isn't in your region let me know in the comments and i'll make sure to chase that up i thought it would be nice not only to put in a game that you should avoid this week because i found one that just hurt my feelings <laughs> but also we've got a couple of games that are like bargains of the week we've got a hidden gem and then there's games that are still on sale from last week's sales video i thought maybe i'd just like squish those and put them at the end of this one let me know what you think of that idea it just saves you having to go and watch two videos which will be great for us but isn't going to be good for you in you know your time so yeah we'll, we'll do that and see what you think it's like that scene in the matrix with the spoon there is no backlog what's on sale well let's find out first then we'll start with a couple of games that i've picked up this week myself mainly because people kept saying why haven't you covered that on the channel it's amazing so i thought i'd give it a go and it's spelunky and spelunky 2 at the moment they're 40 percent off each so you could pick them both up for about 15 quid or your regional equivalent and they're absolutely excellent as the name suggests, you go spelunking essentially, and you never quite know what you're going to get. The levels seem to change every time you go in, and from my limited playtime on both of the games, I've probably put in a couple of hours on each, I can definitely see what the hype is all about. The environments are fully destructible, and there's always some secret hiding around the corner. Now the sequel, to my eye, Spelunky 2, saw, seems to have seen a lot of update. It seems everything's grander in scale, there seems to be more places that you can go to, more to find, and I have the feeling I'm at the tip of the iceberg, like they just feel massive. What's very cool is you can get a load of people along for the ride so if you've got kids or just friends imagine that friends you can actually uh, give them a controller and they can join you for your adventures there's also in the second one at least I'm sure online multiplayer so you can play online with a group of pals yeah very cool games surprisingly good actually and they they rarely go on a sale this deep hopefully all the details for those are on your screen and that sale ends on July the 14th Monkey 2 deeper secrets an array of new tools. Thanks to the publishers of Game Deck for sponsoring this episode. Now, Game Deck retails at £26.99 or your regional equivalent, but right now, until July the 21st, it's on a 40% discount. The prices and regions for that can all be seen at the bottom of the screen. On paper, Game Deck is everything I enjoy. It's a single player cyberpunk isometric RPG. Despite its appearances, this isn't like Baldur's Gate, and the focus here is on intricate and detailed dialogue. Now, what is a Game Deck? Well, a Game Deck is essentially a detective who, within in this world is hired to go into various game simulations and solve crimes. At the beginning of the game you can create your own character and you'll put points into different personality traits that will then help with the dialogue. Each new crime involves entering a new simulation. One in particular reminded me of jumping directly into one of my favourite TV shows Westworld. There's a codex and deduction mechanic that allows you to take the facts that you've gathered. This helps you to make deductions and eventually your conclusion. But much of the narrative operates in a grey area that allows for the player to put their own personal ethics onto the situation. The two worlds of the game are Realium, the real world, and Virtualium, the virtual, and each has its own obstacles to try and get past. The whole experience is set within Warsaw City in the 22nd century. The tech of the future is so advanced that the term real is relative and life and death have many different meanings. What's quite cool is when you enter a new world you'll also engage with new gameplay mechanics, so you're never quite sure what the experience will involve. Spaceland is a little bit of a hidden gem I'd say, if you're a fan of tactical turn-based games at least. It's only £3.59, that's an 80% discount, an absolute bargain. And it's quite a straightforward in many ways. Um, tactical turn-based game that has seven different fighters. The battles themselves take around about 10 to 15 minutes and there are 20 different enemy types. I thought it was just a really nice simplistic art style that worked really well with this gameplay. There are a few little things thrown in that you don't see in every game some of the environmental things that you can use i enjoyed the dialogue between the different team members but it's kind of a does what it says on the tin style xcom game it's not going to set the world on fire i'd be keen to see what they do with a sequel but 537 megabytes and only three quid i mean yeah nice little pickup that one If 
you haven't seen our video, The Resurrection of Baldo, I'll pop one of those little silly box things over there. Click that and it will schedule it up so you can watch it after this. But essentially, the developers have been working on it non-stop since... Well, the tirade of just, not abuse, because the game wasn't quite right at launch, let's be honest, but the uh, the tirade of feedback, shall we say. And while they didn't agree with all of it, they did agree with quite a lot of it, and they went away and patched the game to high heavens, and it's massively improved. Now, there'll, there'll be some people in the comments saying, oh, it's not an amazing game. Well, no, you're not going to like every game, that's, that's just the way it is. But it's so much improved on what it was. There's so many quality of life features that make it playable now, and I've got all the time in the world for a developer that does that. They could quite easily have just gone on to their next project, you know, and washed their hands of it. They still made a, a, a bit of money on it. They still, I believe, sold over... 100, 200,000 copies, but to come back to it, fair play to them, added in a free DLC, a brand new free story mode, loads of um, tutorial style elements that just made it easier to navigate the world and mapping and stuff, but yeah, check out that full video if you're interested, if you're not, then let's move on, but I probably should have said it's 30% off, <laughs> and that's until July the 7th, and there is a physical of that one as well. Then we've got one of my favorite genres. It's the old school, in air quotes, adventure game, but this is like a new school one. It's called Lacuna, and it's only three quid, well, three pound 59, and it's 80% off at the moment. This one caught my eye after someone recommended it. I don't know if it was on Twitter or if it was in the comments here. If it was you, then thank you very much. It's a lovely game. Now, it's another one of my pickups this week. The backlog grows ever greater, but for the hour or two I've put into it, I'm really enjoying it. It kind of has that mixture between um, Beneath a Steel Sky and the game I reviewed last week on the channel, which was the Blade Runner... Um, Oh, what's it? The Blade Runner point and click adventure that, that Night Dive have bought across to Switch. But what's very cool here, and it's something I'm sure it's been done before, but I just haven't experienced it, but it's got non repeating conversations and choices. So when you make a choice, that's it. That choice is made. It's done. There's no, there's no do-overs until you play through again. And for me, that's one of the weakest areas of a point and click is not, not a point and click per se, because they don't generally have multiple choices, although Blade Runner does have some multiple choice, but games that allow you to go back and just change your mind. I know it's, it, maybe it's better from a gameplay standpoint, but actually from a storyline, from creating a character that you have to stick to, forcing you into that position of, look, like, you've made this choice, see it out to the end. I've got a bit of time for that. Plus it's not overly long. You're looking at around about six or seven hours. Um, and there's basically a detective um, adventure here where you play as Neil Conrad a CDI agent and there's multiple branching stories multiple endings and the opportunity for potential multiple playthroughs is, is actually real here for once really enjoyed that one and the sale goes on until July the 20th no point in trying to see the future the Aqua Kitty games are some of the best on Switch and some that a lot of people don't really know about. I think I reviewed the first one and Glenn reviewed this latest Astro Kitty Aqua... Oh my goodness, I can't even say it. Astro Aqua Kitty, which is essentially a space-based RPG where you've got your little um, spaceship that you can level up and you can add things to it. Different weapons, different gear. You pick your crew before you go out on your adventure. And there are pirate rabbits that try and... Uh, relieve you of your heavy goods. By all accounts, it's a lovely game with some brilliant boss fights in here as well. I'll try and pop another one of those little postcardy things in the corner so you can watch the review afterwards. But only 392 megabytes, very, very highly acclaimed by people that have played it. And you're looking at about a seven to 10 hour adventure. Now this one's only on sale until July the 7th, but 60% off at £4.79. It could be essentially a hidden gem, couldn't it? But we won't call it one because, well, it's not hidden, I don't think. Indie darling then, we've got Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, which most of you will know about by now. It's 25% off at the moment, matching its previous low, and it's a, a very, very cool hybrid. Now, if you've heard of Japanese perfectionism, there's this, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, is it an ethos within Japanese culture of perfecting absolutely everything you do? And I love that. But this game encapsulates it perfectly. On the one hand, you've got these really action-heavy sections where you go out into the world, you're harvesting, looking for different things, fighting creatures. And then on the other, you come back to base and you have this rice paddy that you just, you just chill and plant. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Netflix and chill, it's Netflix and plant, which I don't know what that would look like. <laughs> it would probably be illegal. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but yeah, you can spend <laughs> you can spend ages just slowly placing everything into that those neat lines within your rice paddy, and then it, that affects the amount of gains you get from that field. All kinds of rice gains. Yeah, love this. Really love this game. Just put a big smile on our faces. We've got another review of it. We only get five of these card things, so let's pop a review of that one. The card up there. So click that if you want to. And uh, yeah. Highly recommend it. About 30 to 50 hours of gameplay. Can't wait to see what they do with a sequel. And there is a physical copy as well, which is very cheap. So support these kinds of devs. I got all the time in the world for that. Unlike some that don't like single player games. <coughs> Yay. Then we've got the unexpectedly good Transformers Battlegrounds. Now, I am a unashamed Transformers nerd. I've got to be honest, some of the latest films are just not very good. But I had zero expectations for the game. I thought it was going to be hot, hot garbage. Until I saw that it was developed by Coatsync. Now, Coatsync have some great games, including one where you've got a double-ended sausage dog. <laughs> Trust me, you should check it out. It's actually a very good co-op game. But this is a turn-based tactical game that has Bumblebee, Windblade, Optimus Prime, all your classics in there. And a reasonably intuitive cover system. It's very fast paced, it's got local multiplayer so you can play with two of you against the uh, the minions of Cybertron and it's a decent length story over several missions. You're looking at about 8 to 10 hours. Chiefly, I couldn't believe it was actually okay. It's not the best tactical game on Switch by any means but I mean it's a really nice one. It's quite a good introduction as well if you're new to the genre. But if you're a uh, Transformers fan then maybe consider this one plus the physical is ludicrously cheap. It's like £11.99 which is Oh, it's a bargain, <laughs> basically. Well worth considering if you like this style of game. Next up then, we've got the kids pick of the week and usually it's my daughter that does this, but this time around it's gonna be my son's pick and it's Ben 10 Power Trip. It's one that I reviewed on the channel and it was it's always a bit odd as like a 30 something. <laughs> it's that Brent moment, isn't it? 30s, yeah. <laughs> But it's always a bit odd when you're reviewing like kids games because I mean I think all of us gamers in a way we, we, we are like big kids right there's a part of us that just has never grown up and that's absolutely fine and playing Ben 10 Power Trip I, I felt like I should be sat there like <laughs> I don't know lamenting my time with it but it wasn't terrible it's not the greatest but for a kid like it's perfect there are different character types that you can control and they have their own abilities one of them can like rail grind around the city and that was it, that was just so much fun for the kids there's also split screen mode so they can play together. Now what I will say about split screen is the performance is absolutely terrible. Like you're talking about like 25 frames a second, but again, kids don't care, do they? I'm looking at my kids saying like, you know, are you all right with that? And they're like, what? And I just stared at them, a bit disappointed in a way, but they were very happy. So, you know, good on them. An enjoyable little adventure from Outright Games developed by PHL Collective. And you're looking potentially about five to seven hours for an adult, but for a kid, do you remember how long you used to spend playing one game? So I wouldn't worry too much about that. £14.99, 40% off, and that's until July the 6th. And there's also a physical that's always cheaper. The real hidden gem this week, it's one that's been, I have actually had it as a hidden gem once before, so I guess it's like a second-hand hidden gem. It's Luca, Born of a Dream. It's £3.23, so I mean that's got to be bargain of the week, right? 70% off, and it's an absolutely fantastic action hack and slash from this top-down perspective, but with an art style that's just so unusual. You essentially play as a character that's been marked or cursed, and your inner demons come to life as the nightmare apparitions that you'll be fighting. There are loads of different realms, it's got a really nice combat system that's surprisingly deep, and you can befriend familiars, and then you use their ranged magics. When you're fighting in battle, you can personalize your character with what's known as virtues so you might have uh, like a slow motion dodge or you might add in a, a parry that stuns the enemies and there's a rewind mechanic so if you die in battle it kind of rewinds to the start of that or you might want to re rewind manually so that you can get better scores yeah cool one cool one i played this maybe a year and a half ago a good chunk of time ago it's been a long time so i've forgotten some of the mechanics but enjoyed it at the time and thought wow i've never heard of this before it has a download of 1.4 gigs and yeah about six to ten hours or more because it's got quite a bit of hidden content
All right, we'll do our avoid game quickly, and then I'll stick in some of the um, the ones from last week. So after the avoid, essentially, if you watch last week's sales video, then you're all good. If you want a refresher on the games that are still on sale that we recommended over there, so you don't have to watch two videos, then check that out. But growing up, I had my little um, Pentium 500 PC. Well, I think it was like Pentium 3 500 megahertz, but I can't remember. The nerdiness was real. And I love to play um, strategy, real-time strategy games, things like that. And on Switch, that's a bit of a barren field. There are some great ones. We've got a video of the top strategy games on Switch, so check that out if you want to. But you haven't got a Total War game, you know. I used to love Rome Total War. It was amazing. On Switch, we've got Caesar Empire War, which is a port of a one-star rated mobile game where you play as Caesar, the Emperor of Rome. And the aim here is to invade Gaul. Now, that's all well and good, but unfortunately, the quoted line here from the developer, and this is what they say about this game, they say, <laughs> this experience is served by superb graphics and animations. This is where I should put that Metal Gear Solid exclamation mark sound. Sorry, superb graphic and animations. Are you sure? Because not only are the graphics and animations appalling, but the, the AI pathfinding is atrocious. So you'll have your soldiers will just stand idly, not doing what they should be doing. People will just go in the wrong place. It's just a mess. Like, I don't actually mind that art style. You can actually have some brilliant games like this. If you remember the old original Dune games, you know, they didn't look much better than this, but they were, they were much better. And on that note, why haven't we got Command & Conquer? Why did EA feel the need to kill that, that you know, bring Westwood back? Give us the, the, the base Command & Conquer with a nice lick of paint. Everything running nice HD, thanks very much, but the same game. And I will, I'll buy five copies, we'll give four away and <sighs> sigh. Let's stop moaning, Walker. Let's get on with the video. Stop lamenting your childhood. But don't buy Caesar's Empire War. Caesar Empire War, it's trash. Hot trash. Even at £2.49. Even to that one guy that always buys all the avoids. No thanks. Then we have the games from last week's sales video. These ones are still on sale. Just quickly, you've got Eastward at 20% off. Dragon Quest 11s, 30% off. Getsu Fumiden, Undying Moon, which was the pick of the week. Well, actually, it wasn't the pick of the week. It was the hidden gem. 35% off. Ender Lilies, Quietest of the Night, a great Metroidvania. 30% off. Phenotopia P.O.W. Phenotopia Awakening is half price, an absolutely excellent game, massively underrated in the community. 40 to 50 hours of gameplay, brilliant. The Castlevania Anniversary Collection, 75% off still until the 7th. Immortals Phoenix Rising, you know about that one, 75% off. And Dark Souls Remastered in the US, which is never on sale. So if you're considering it, or you didn't know it was on sale, pick this one up, absolutely. Classic game, not as hard as it looks. And that is it for this week. Make sure you send it, save 10% on any of these games if you want to, using code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg, and we get a little kickback, which is just lovely, isn't it? Thanks to all of you and to our patrons who support us each and every month. Channel membership, hopefully when I sit down on Sunday, channel membership might be live for this video. I mean, I really should now that I've said it, get it live. We've got little badges and stuff, not badges. <laughs> you don't want to put a badger by your name. Well, you might do. But we've got little badges that my bro, who is a graphic designer, has made. So hopefully you'll like those. And it's a way of supporting the channel. And you can leave super chats and stuff when we do live streams, which we rarely do. So, you know, I've just undersold that, haven't I? <laughs> For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! Thank you.